I'd like to get your views on what's been happening in Hong Kong of late, given um, your, your role in the Textile Association and the broader weakness we've seen for the Hong Kong economy. So given what's been happening, a third day of unrest here in the city in a row. Well, Hong Kong's obviously going through challenging times, but I have confidence in the Hong Kong people that over time we'll solve these problems and we will we'll rise again. And uh, we're, you know, I think we're, as uh, locals, uh, we're looking forward to that. Are you seeing businesses that you uh, collaborate with perhaps coming under more pressure? We've seen the retail industry, for example, seeing sales um, under pressure. Yeah, the retail industry is one of the hardest hit industries in Hong Kong. And uh, there are certain, for people who are exposed to the retail uh, industry here, it's, uh, it's not easy. And given the uh, tariff uh, story uh, has been changing between the U.S. and China, there was that garment uh, tariff that hit earlier uh, just a couple months ago. Have you seen any uh, change with regards to your strategy with that? Uh, well, for our co for actually, oh, there, there are two parts. For the industry in general, for those manufacturers who only have Chinese manufacturing, they're definitely going through tough times. But luckily for our company, uh, because we have an asset light strategy and we have a very versatile multi-country production platform, uh, we're able to produce things in Vietnam, Indonesia, Cambodia, and so forth, and uh, that helps us mitigate the problems of the tariffs. And increasingly, you have a bigger production base in Vietnam. Tell us more about your plans there. Uh, for Vietnam, we've been increasing uh, rapidly. Uh, we, we, you know, this is one of our largest production bases, and uh, uh, I think it's going to continue to go, go that way going forward. But who knows, you know, there may be changes, and uh, with an asset light strategy, we can move uh, much more quickly than our competitors can. Now, part of the IPO proceeds will go towards acquisition as you hope to uh, develop a high value added ecosystem. You're already down that path. Tell us more. Well, we have a platform of a lot of great uh, uh, customers as well as uh, we know how to develop capacity. And if we can acquire additional companies with know-how in different product categories, we can then be a full, sort of full wardrobe solution for our clients. And uh, we believe that that's the best way to grow. You already have uh, customer service capabilities, account management. What other uh, add-ons are you hoping uh, to see? Yeah, we're looking for technical ability add-ons. So for example, there are certain product categories that we're very good at, but there are certain ones that we're less experienced in. And if we can acquire co companies with technical know-how in, in those areas, it will really help speed, us, speed up our growth. Now, within the fashion industry, there's a push towards themes like sustainability, traceability, more transparency along the supply chain. How are you uh, working towards achieving those goals? If we've been working on this for more than a decade, uh, we worked on this way before sustainability became a, a hip idea. And uh, we, were, we were the first uh, garment company globally to partner with uh, World, uh, WWF on the low carbon manufacturing program and so we're doing this way before in a way we didn't really jump on the bandwagon we created the bandwagon and where do you see data perhaps feeding into your strategy um, we see perhaps like around garment fit for example data become more important around that right at the retail level uh, data has bec uh, become important and people using AI to predict trends and so forth but up the supply chain uh, data hasn't made those inroads yet and we hope to be amongst the first companies to be able to gather, you know, garner the power of the data to help do a better job for our customers. Now, e-commerce operators make up about half of your clientele. Uh, you're hoping to boost your B2, uh, B platform capabilities as well. Um, so how do you see that feeding into uh, generating more contribution from e-commerce operators? Well, uh, uh, people nowadays, you know, we all buy clothes on the internet. There's no reason why B2B buyers can't do the same thing. And we're therefore trying to create this platform on the on our website so that you know our customers can uh, can order things much more easily taking the human element the manual labor data input out of the equation and that allows us to serve our customers faster more accurate and in a more cost effective manner now tapping india is an aspiration for your company so what steps are being taken in that direction Sorry, India. India. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, we've uh, we've uh, made uh, plenty of visits to India, and that's one of the countries that we feel has got the uh, has got the uh, potential to take up uh, uh, more garment production. Now that you know China, because of the tariff issue, is uh, quickly losing uh, its market share. And how do you see your position on the mainland, given that you're shifting more of your production base, for example, in Vietnam, but ultimately the consumer market in China is still so exciting? Yes, the consumer market is still growing, and we see that growing for the, for the foreseeable future. And uh, we've been putting a lot of efforts into developing our Chinese clientele, and uh, we're seeing some progress there as well.